Who here's bought something on Amazon before? Like most people, okay? When people think about how you buy from Amazon, you really are just kind of, you're paying for, a lot for them to deliver a lot of value to you. And my wife has a lot of packages delivered. So we have, you know, on any given day, we may have like three or four Amazon packages. And I go, stir, like what's all, what's word in these packages? She goes, I don't know. How many packages we get? We don't even know what's getting delivered anymore. Um, which is a whole nother story. Amazon is probably the biggest example of e-commerce online. You know, significant portion of all online e-commerce is done through Amazon, at least here domestically in the U.S. I don't know about your businesses, but my business is not really like this, at least not yet. I think I have to do more than Amazon, because Amazon, you, know, you order on Amazon, you kind of know what you're getting. Two-day delivery, everything's secure. You don't, but when you're a small business with your own website, you, people are asking a lot more questions of you. And that's why I wanted to give this talk today, because I think it's tough to compare ourselves with Amazon, such a different uh, e-commerce platform than ordering just, you know, on our own websites, our products, our services. So what I want to talk about today is converting new website visitors into paying customers a little bit when you're not Amazon, kind of more focused on small businesses us here are. So most people think about, when they think about doing this, converting new website visitors, they think about my sales process. I have to make sure the checkout process works. I have to make sure people can go through the checkout process, purchase my products or services, so I'm kind of staying behind the studio. Uh, and that's... But most people who come to your website aren't ready to buy yet. Obviously, you should have your checkout process optimized so that people can check out if they want to. The fact still remains that most people who come to your website aren't even ready to buy from you yet. And so, if we look at this stat, we only have 4% of people need more before they're going to buy anything from you. And if we want visitors to just visit, and we want them to give us the credit card information, right? That's like, that's the goal of commerce. Uh, or but rarely does that happen, especially when, you know, we're not in. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today, is how to get that to that 96% of people who may not be ready to buy, may buy from you a month from now, or may buy from you six months from now, or may buy from you two years from now, but they're not going to do that without you doing something as well. And so that's what I want to talk about a lot today. Uh, kind of not necessities for getting value from this talk. It's just what I'm assuming uh, in my preparing for it. I have a website up and running. Services there. Uh, if you don't have a website right now, you're still going to get value out of this. But I'm not going to, I guess, like go through setting up a website or go through like how to sell, uh, how to uh, set up products and services on a website. Um, so the focus is slightly more towards people who have a checkout process on their website, people who uh, you know, pay with a credit card or PayPal on the website. This is, you need to get people on a call. You want to get people to supplies. But it is a little bit more slanted towards e-commerce. So these are the main pieces I'm going to talk about today. Before I even really dive in, I kind of want to preface my talk by saying I've, so I started my own business and this process is what's worked pretty well for my business. But I don't think this exact process is going to work for every single business. I kind of think of this as a blueprint, uh, a skeleton that you can use and pick the pieces you think are going to work. For you. But just purely copying and pasting everything I say today into your own may not be the most effective um, for me. And it's more sharing my story, not giving you an exact. Every business needs to. And that's 
how you But we're going to go through a lot of helpful stuff regardless. And also, if people have questions while during, quick question. WP buffs forward slash convert, C O N B E R T. Um, oh, I should go through these slides before I go to the next slide. Uh, all right, so what we're going to go over today getting to know your website visitors is number one. Most of my things are going to be about this. Uh, I think a lot of people focus on SEO and driving traffic and trying to get sales, but a lot of people skip that first step of just getting to know. Engage people if you don't know who they are. Trust. This is really necessary, especially for. Uh, like I mentioned before, most people are. Sometimes that's just a trust issue. And it may not be because you're not trustworthy, they require a little bit more time for you to gain their trust. So we're going to talk about that. To people to an email list and then sending personalized email. There was a presentation before all sorts of incredible statistics on why uh, marketing is the most efficient way to do things. I don't have any of those numbers here, but it is, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and especially for a small business, there aren't a lot of highly effective ways to get new customers and build trust with them. But if you can get them on your email list and if you can gain that inbox trust, that's a, a huge way for a small business to be able to, to, to get in with people. All right, so that's kind of a blueprint. If I don't put water break slides, I just burn right through. <laughs> because usually no one lasts for about five seconds, and then once they've seen it like two or three times, I go, oh, that's kind of funny. All right. Best tools uh, that I found to get to know your website visitors. Again, these are the tools I use. I'm not telling you you have to use these tools, but I'm going to go through them because they've been what have worked for me. There are multiple options for analytics and live chat, and Hotjar is a tool where you can. We'll go into that. There are multiple tools for all these. That's what I've used, uh, and I'm just going to go through them quickly. Again, we're number one. We're getting to know our website visitors. Google Analytics allows you to. Uh, so it's a little grainier than I want to be, so I apologize for that. But the, you can turn demographics on in Google Analytics. And after you do that, once you traffic, again, this talk is not about getting the traffic, it's more about converting visitors. Once we have that traffic, you can actually turn on demographics and see what most of your, uh, 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 like what kind of demographics are coming from. This is for our website, WP. Um, most website visitors are 25 to 34 years old. Pretty important information to know in terms of. Also in demographics, you can see uh, even more information about people. So the most, uh, you know, a significant amount of people who visit our website are interested in technology or technophiles. Uh, and that second one was very interesting to me. They're shutterbugs, which means they're interested in photography uh, or videography. And so that lets you know, add a lot more photography to our website, a way to build trust with people. So very basic Google Analytics demographics info. Not going to go a ton into it, but it's a really easy place to get uh, information on who's visiting your website. The second is live chat. I think that a lot of businesses have live chat on their website, but it says stuff like sales agent or talk to me about sales. And it's very clearly someone who's tr just trying to be a live chat. You know, they're like questions, but only questions about what we do uh, or like about buying something from but If you're not a ton of traffic, to interact with people who are on your website. You can literally talk to people. You Thing like that, you just you just get to know them. Who are you? Where are you chatting from? And Olark's nice because it gives you some of that. Well, so as long as you're not using something like a VPN, um, you can get some of that information. Before you can build, and 
this is one of those things, I'm gonna answer your question, one second. This is one of those things that, so on our website, we now have kind of like more, we push people more towards sales because we get a lot of really targeted is super valuable for us. Yeah, question. was when I started out, did I have to have people on staff, on live chat all the time? Did I feel like I had to be on all the time? Uh, as a team of one, it can be difficult. The answer is no, you can be on and off whenever you want to. It's your business, do what you want. Hotjar, again, there are multiple tools to be able to do stuff like this, but Hotjar is a really good way to be able to a whole bunch of other awesome stuff as well, like heat maps, the point I want to talk about today is uh, polls. So I put this, whenever anybody opts into our email, redirect it to a page. A little answer it. But once you have a pretty good amount of traffic, you can get answering it. I put this question up, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so. I asked the question, uh, what are you currently working on? Are you your own website, client website, both. People were answering the second two, right? 55% were answering client websites or both. And my company manages WordPress websites for small businesses, entrepreneurs. Now we also have a program where we work with agencies on their client sites. And it's all because I asked this question. And got, oh, most people visiting our website are working on client sites. Why don't we help them work on client sites? one all day. Uh, I gave another WordCamp talk on it, um, which is literally all about getting to know your website visitors. So, step two, building trust. These are kind of some, I know I said at the beginning of the talk, I don't want to, some best practices everybody should be doing in order to connect better with uh, your website visitors is really hard, uh, and I don't claim to be. Uh, and so the copy on our website's fine. Uh, to write like you speak. Um, I just use that, I try to use that as a rule of thumb. If you try to write whatever sales copy in a town, too salesy. Um, I think just writing to, uh, not rocket science, but you, when people buy from you, if people are going to buy from you, they want to see, you know, if testimonials there is important. As on area, um, a lot of websites, if you've kind of act, uh, impacted your on a different site or guest blog posts, or you somewhere from the other website to your own website, saying, "Oh, I trust you know this other site. I'm gonna you know business as well." SSL certificate is a big one. I hear from a lot of people like I don't have a checkout on my website. No one's at giving me credit card information. Do I need to have an SSL to get on my website? I don't think so. And I like totally disagree with that. I think this is a huge trust factor. I'm like, file, like we mentioned before, if I is trying to sell something and they don't have an SSL, SSL certificate, I'm not even gonna think about it. Because to me it's, well, they don't care that much about their website. So, I think the even far we talked about reviews a little bit, but people, especially if you're in, in an it's important to have good reviews. It's 
be five. As important as getting good reviews online and having a system for that is also having some system for the, what happens to the bad reviews too. So like on Facebook, we've gotten a few bad reviews and we reply to them. And I think that's important for, for people to see. They see a bad review, but then it's how, did that, how does the company handle it? That's almost just as important. But being authentic, I think, is an important point here. I think that people but you know, people who you want to make very happy and happy. And that comes from being authentic. So if you're the kind of person who likes to influence your writing with or influx your writing with humor, if you're like a funny do that if that's what you want to do. If you are more of a serious writer, that's okay too. But there are certain cases where it may not make sense, but you will find your group of people regardless of what you want to do. So I just want to remember that. You know that. All right, converting to email list. There was a whole talk uh, earlier today, probably of you uh, specifically. It was really good. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, sorry, you hear some of it again. Uh, there are a few tools, again, not the tools you have to use, but we use Sumo. Uh, there's another tool called OpMonster, a really way to be able to collect email addresses on your website. You want to pay for a tool that does. So if you're like giving away a free ebook or a work or a course or anything, you know, to add value to people, it products or services. Because the whole point of building an email list is to build a list of people who at some point may be interested in buying from you. Um, and so if you all right, A B testing. This is a pop-up an exit intent pop-up. We threw up on the website. Uh, this, if you click yes, it goes to our free ebooks page where you can download the ebooks. So this does not directly convert to email, but it pushes them to a page to collect email addresses. Uh, or at least it did. We don't have this up anymore. But you can see in the top, 5.36% conversion rate. I did an A-B test. It's the same pop-up, but the button is smaller. I thought this is going to convert worse. It converts it's almost 8%. Smaller button. My point here really is just that you have no idea what's going to convert well, <laughs> right? I thought the opposite would happen. 80% of the time, my assumption is wrong. And so that, that may say more about me, <laughs> but I think it's important to test these and make sure it's data driven. I uh, adjusted the uh, plug or the, the content or the copy here again and turned the sentence around, uh, added an image. Whoa, it's almost 25% conversion, right? You just phrase the question differently. So, A-B testing is important. You want to do it at least a little bit. Uh, one caveat I'll have about A-B testing is if you don't have a significant amount of traffic, your A-B testing doesn't really matter that much. You probably want to focus more on getting more traffic and then A-B testing once you have that traffic. If I had to say a cutoff, I'd say like 10,000 visitors a month if I like was forced to say a number. But if you have less, it's still find A-B test. If you have more, obviously it's find A-B test. That's just my kind of number that's in my head. Yes, please. Good question. How long do I run A-B tests? Do I run it for a certain amount of time or until I get a certain amount of data? Uh, this is my super non-scientific answer, which is I run it until I get enough data that I feel like I have come to a conclusion about the efficiency of it. So if I have 10 on each, I'm going to keep running it. If I have a thousand on each, that could give me my answer. Uh, depending on how much traffic you get, it could take a day. It could take a month. So it's not time, it's much more how much, uh, how many people have seen these pop-ups and what's the conversion rate look like.
Yeah, yeah. And again, that wasn't that. But I think a lot of running your own business is just like having to feel for it. So. All right, sending personalized email. Uh, so I think when it comes to email copy, I think people really think like, uh, I think personalizing email is, can be the number one reason why someone can buy from you. If they feel like you're really taking care of them, then, then they're going to feel trusted really interested in, not just sending the same things you're writing or content to every single person, that's going to have a huge effect, uh, and it definitely has at WP Buffs, um, and I'll go into it a little bit here uh, at the end. You want to personalize email for each subscriber, and this doesn't mean you literally have to sit and write personalized emails to every single person, um, but you want to have uh, an email service provider that allows you to talk about that here in a second. Jab, 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 right hook. This slide. Uh, hey, thanks. In my from what I've seen at what we've done at WP Buffs, it makes much more sense to deliver a ton of value to people before you do the ask. And just feel like, man, they provided so much value to me. Like I should probably consider buying what they have if, it, if it's something I'm interested in. Uh, and this is kind of being in it for the long term as opposed to like, for the stat, most people are not gonna be ready to buy from you. And still at this point, a lot of people are not gonna be ready to buy from you. So you really have to continue to provide value, which is the last bullet point here. So provide value. We had a question. <laughs> I don't know them that well, yeah. and certainly they know me better than I know them. Yes. And that would really be So, very good point. You said, sometimes I get email that's like creepily, uh, like knows too much about me, and I delete it. Uh, I have two things there, I think. One is, as someone who's running something like this, I'm always looking at my numbers. I have like a repeat test, like go and check my stuff out and make sure I'm continuing to optimize things, which everybody should be doing. The second is, don't not do this because you think some people will think that. I think you're right. But whatever you do as a business owner, you're going to have collateral damage. You're going to have a couple people like that who are going to delete your email and not want to talk to you. It's like I said, being authentic. Don't try to make everybody happy. Your job is to try and get a little better every day. So don't like not implement this because you're scared something like that might happen. It happened. We get emails and people live chatting us saying, hey, your stuff sucks. Okay. Like, what, else, what are you going to do? That was a little rant, so, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, so she says she has 500 customers. How am I gonna send personalized emails to everyone? So I'm about to go over how to send personal emails to a lot of people without actually having to type out all the email. But very, it's a very good question. And a good Mm. Extra water break. Convert kit. I know I said this a bunch of times. The tool I use, not the tool everybody has to use, but I would like to demo. Can I get a time check? Oh, sweet. Okay. Email service provider. This sent emails for me. From your Gmail account, what you're going to do is you're going to find an uh, email service provider. And again, I'm just kind of, this is my account. There's no like fake information in here. This is how we. Okay, so it joins our email list. Let's click on the welcome series. Uh, we give away all these free ebooks when people sign up. You, know, you can learn about website speed and security, uh, and you can even read the uh, case studies that we've created for customers who work. 
So whenever anybody signs up for email address, as email, this sends automatically. Okay, so I have this set up to send immediately. You can change that. Okay, then the next Friday, they're going to get a they get one email a week with some of our best content. And the way I've chosen this content is I've gone on Google Analytics and seen what content gets the most traffic. <laughs> All right, everyone. The, the uh, about personalization. So I've kind of talked a little bit about automation every Friday, but they will stop getting these emails. Well, let me talk about the click triggers, okay? So if someone clicks uh, this first link, they want to check out how someone took control of their three complex websites, okay? You can tag, subscribe. I'm going to learn a little bit about this, but this is literally how it works. A potential customer. And they're going to be tagged. If we look at this second, they're tagged as a potential agency because they were interested in clicking through uh, how we helped in one of our white label partners. And so if none of this was clicked, they continue to get these emails, okay? But if you come down here, send great content. Our email list in the different buckets. And if we come back out here to our sequences, what we've done is once someone gets tagged as that, they're removed from the new, from the welcome series. content every Monday. So they still get a piece of content every week. Add to an agency or a customer series or a freelancer series. And we come to our freelancer series. Again, I'm still not selling them at first. I tell them about our podcast. I'm sending them a new email every day. You just click this. Now I'm telling you. It takes time. It takes a and the next week, we talk about our white label program a little bit. And it kind of goes through this cycle now as well. So I think this is a very, the, the, I had an email list with a whole big flow sheet. It was awesome. It was also like somewhat complicated. It did take time to set up. I think that was a super effective way to do things. For me, like I got to keep it simple or I'm going to lose myself in it. And so I think but this is a really easy and simple way to segment an email list, and it's it's like super easy, right? All I all you did was it takes a while to write this copy, right? You have to sit down and write the copy. That's time intensive, not gonna lie. But and a reminder that this didn't and figuring out what works, but just setting up the simple automation between tests or once you together. Very easy with ConvertKit. This is for us. And we upgraded from MailChimp, I think. MailChimp to ConvertKit and our click rate increased significantly, 20, 30%. Questions specifically? I'm about to wrap up, so we're almost done. Quick question, yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't show Sumo. The question was, or the comment was, you talked about Sumo, but you didn't show it. Uh, all right. This is Sumo. This is a click trigger. They have, this is called a click trigger, so you click and the pop-up comes up. They also have exit intent. Someone's trying to exit. They have a uh, pull box that comes up on the bottom corner. They have a, like a, a bar that just sits around ac across the top. It has a bunch of different options. No addresses. Um, they, provide plugins for 
The question is, do you load the plugin? I kind of talked about this a little bit, but in terms of final thoughts, I know this is kind of a broad overview of moving from, uh, from, from new website visitors uh, to getting, I don't know about the but I think that as uh, the, the converting people into uh, actual paid customers part, the any credit card information. This is the hard part. Actually, implement this. Build methodology. This image in the top right is a little small, so I apologize for that. But learn, build, measure. We want to go. Uh, all the stuff I showed you, I didn't just come up one day and say I'm doing it this way, and then I did it. It took a lot of experimenting. I have large screw ups. Obviously, none of us do, but. If you have someone who gets upset with you, that's gonna happen. I promise it will happen to you if you're trying to do this. Uh, and that's part of what you sign up for. Uh, but the little screw ups will lead to learning and lead to improving things. Last two bullets, like what's a trick and there is no finish line, it's kind of the same thing. I think the trick is uh, you really have to dedicate time to this. I think that small business owners or consultants or developers or designers or marketers, we're very focused on our clients. for building relationships, gaining trust, uh, and then eventually adding enough value that people want to uh, move to the sales process, either schedule a call or actually check out, then we have to dedicate time to it. So pause, I don't get email unless it's 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday. Email doesn't even come into my inbox. Turn your phone on airplane mode. Get the Chrome extension that turns off the Facebook feed. You need to remove the, the things that take up your time and the notifications that take you away from what you're doing. Dedicate one, two, three hours at a time to just doing this one thing. Um, I think that's what works for me. That's another thing. I'm not telling you how to do it, but I'm telling you it was really effective for me. Now. A lot of people find it. And if you just try it and really dedicate yourself to it, it does work for sure. That's uh, Uh, bbbucks.com if you want to check out the website. Um, we do a podcast too. Uh, websites for clients at WPMRR. We business of WP Buffs. Increase. We have a free podcast. So, head out. Let's go him first and then come back. <laughs> okay, we'll start in the front. Uh, question was, have I considered Drip or Aweber? Yes, I considered Drip. I chose ConvertKit. I, I don't like my talks to be too focused on the tool. I think Drip's more, but I just didn't. But Drip has a lot of this functionality that can do this in terms of uh, personalizing and segmenting email. That's good. Yeah. Mm. So I think it has to do with well, uh, 
You would be <laughs> so The question was, have you seen a decrease in engagement rate that happens over time? Yeah, that happens to everybody. Uh, I don't think anybody's immune. The cycle I talked about, the four steps, you always have to keep going back to step one. Who are my users? Why am I, I need to be talking with them. I need to be gathering information from them. What do they want? Because you may, the, the content you put in these automated emails may not work three months later. They may not work, especially a year later. You're, you always have to continue to revamp this to give people what's new, what's fresh, what they're engaging with, what they're interested in. Um, and so I think going back to that and constantly experimenting, like I, I engagement. Um, the second piece I think about is, I mean, like as a broad Give this people the next six. Probably a little farther than that, but this is not something that's going to be like written in stone uh, and uh, forever good. I found one more question, so I see you in the back there. So the question is, is the question like, wh what's too many emails to send, be sending? So this is something I think is really different for everyone. I get emails that I subscribe to that I get every day. And I don't get tired of them because they're great emails. I like getting that content every day. Like indie hackers, I'm a big part of indie hackers. They send me email every day. New podcasts, new forums, stuff I can interact with. I love getting those emails. But if some people sent me daily emails, I'd literally unsubscribe immediately because I don't want to get them. I did today. I got emails from like Teachable, and they were sending me emails, like three emails a day. I had to unsubscribe. Uh, that being said, I think it's different for everyone. I think that it requires experimentation to look at the numbers and see when it's going up and when it's going down. But more importantly, I think it's important to find some, this is kind of a fuzzy answer, but have some sort of gut feeling that's like, what do, what do people want? And I put, a, I put a poll up that said that I asked people, how often do you want to receive email? And it had like four options, and I got like 25% for each, which was like the worst answer I could have gotten, right? I have no help. Uh, so that's not super helpful, but I think that lean cycle, it, it requires experimentation. There's no, perfect, there's no perfect way to do it, and no one has it perfect. Or very, very, very few people have it perfect. So, Take solace in that, and that you're probably not there anyway, so if you just want to try and get a little bit better than you were yesterday, that's the best advice I can give. Cool. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Enjoy the after party. I think there's one. Woo!